Today we're going to talk about a really cool feature of C++ called templates. So to motivate templates, let's go back to this swap function that we looked at in tutorial. So here we have a function that just swaps the values of two integers. But the swap function is a really useful function. We're going to use it all the time in, in sorting algorithms. And so, you know, we don't want to just sort integers, we want to sort other numerical types, doubles, floats, we want to sort strings, we want to sort all kinds of things. And for all of these, you know, we're going to want to use a swap function. So what can we do in this case, right? One thing is we could just write a swap function for every different type for which we'll need it. So here I've written the swap function for ints, for doubles, and for strings. But if you look at the code here, the code is exactly the same, right? The only thing that is changing is the type. So it seems kind of silly to have to write this function over and over when the only thing that's changing is the type. So is there some better way to do this? And the answer is yes, and that better way is via templates. Okay, so here's an example of a templated swap function. So the syntax is um, just before the function, we say template and then in angle brackets, type name T. Now type name is a special keyword. Uh, you can also use class there, so class or type name. T is just an arbitrary name. So uh, it's quite common to use T, but you can use anything else. You could use something more descriptive if you want. And T is basically just going to stand for a type. So now we can use T in the definition of the function, and later on that can be instantiated with different types. Okay, so uh, the code stays the same, except you know now we just use T as the type, and we can instantiate that with now with ints by saying my swap angle bracket int, you know a comma b or we can instantiate that with strings or you know any other type. Okay, so um, you can even, uh, you don't need to say the type in, in angle brackets when you call my swap because the compiler can actually deduce uh, what type it should be. Okay, so I don't really need to say my swap angle bracket int of a comma b. I could just say my swap of a comma b and the compiler can deduce that in that case t should stand for int because both a and b are ints. Okay, so a template is not, you know, really magic, right? All it's doing is it's basically transferring the work of instantiating code with different types from the programmer to the compiler. Okay, so the compiler is still going to explicitly write a version of the myswap function for every single type that's needed in your program. Okay? All right, let's look at another example of a templated function. So here we have a print function. So what this print function can do is given a vector with an arbitrary type of element in it, it can print out the elements in the vector. Okay, so in this case, T stands for the type of element in the vector. You see that we say here, standard vector of type T. Okay. Okay, so now in this range-based for loop, the compiler can actually deduce the type of the element in the vector. Okay, so we can actually, uh, instead of using T there, we could just say auto. Right, so auto is basically just saying, okay, compiler, uh, you figure out yourself what the type of the element uh, in the container is. Okay, so instead of saying for const t and x and vec, we can just say for const auto and x and vec. Okay, and now since C20, we can even take the use of auto a step further, and now auto can be used in the parameter list, okay? So um, now we can just say, hey, compiler, actually deduce the
the type of the argument that I'm passing into the print function. So now this print function is able to print out the contents of any container which allows a range-based for loop. Okay, so basically the compiler is deducing the type of the container, and then in the for loop it's deducing the type of element inside the, that container. So of course we could also explicitly write this with templates. In that case we'd need two template parameters, one for the container, one for the type of element inside the container. But the auto syntax in this case kind of is, is much easier to use uh, and re results in a, I think, a much prettier function. So the, now that auto is allowed in parameter lists, it can uh, kind of take the place of using templates, templates and functions in, in a lot of instances. But let me highlight one dis difference between explicitly using a template versus using auto. And that's that basically when, when you explicitly use a template, then you have something to call the, the type T that you're referring to. And this basically can allow you to enforce that certain types are the same. So let's look at this example of a swap function, where now I just say uh, I'm using auto to deduce the types of both x and y. So in this case, uh, the compiler is going to deduce the type of x and deduce the type of y, but it's not, but those types could be different, right? So there's no enforcement that the type of x is the same as the type of y. But in a swap function, we really want that to be the case, right? Otherwise we might get compiler errors if we're trying to um, you know, assign one type to a different type. So I think in this case, it would really be better to explicitly use the uh, template uh, rather than just using auto. Okay, so there's another way that we can use templates and that's in defining a class. So in tutorial, we looked at this my integer class, which is just a, a wrapper class around a, a single integer. Okay, and now we're going to upgrade this class using templates. And for this, I'm basically following an example given by Stepanov, the creator of the standard template library. Uh, so he has a really nice series of lectures on YouTube called Efficient Programming with Components. So if you, if you search for that, you should be able to find it. And this example comes from his lecture two, part one. And he defines a class which he calls a singleton class. And it's a singleton class because it just has one member variable. Okay, so as opposed to like a pair or a triple, it just has one thing in it. Okay, so here's our my integer class that we did in tutorial. Um, so this just had a single integer as a member value. And then we basically tried to simulate, you know, the different things that you can do to an integer. So we had a copy constructor, assignment operators, you know, testing if two my integers are equal and testing if one my integer is less than another. And now we want to make this class, you know, be able to contain not just an integer, but an arbitrary type using templates. Okay, and so in practice, that's actually very easy. Okay, so again, above the class, we just say template type name T. And now inside the code for the class, we can refer to this type T. Okay, and basically what I did here was I just search and replace int for t in the definition of the class. And it's, and it's really that, that easy, okay? And now um, we can instantiate this class with different types. So we could say singleton angle bracket int uh, of x, you know, is three, or we could say singleton of a standard string to define a singleton class with the type instantiated as string. And again, um, you don't even need to put the type in the angle brackets here. Again, the compiler can deduce what it is. Okay. So templates, you know, at first they might seem a little bit scary, but in practice, it turns out they're, they're actually quite easy to use.